So we played this clip earlier. This clip made the rounds, I should say, of uh, uh, Cardinal Gregory yeah. calling Joe Biden a ca cafeteria Catholic. Yeah. Uh, and for right reasons, I want to ask you about that because there's plenty to talk about there. But what didn't get attention, and we spent a good amount of time on in the first hour, was the Episcopalian priestess who was sitting no, right you, next you to him. You mean the clown who thinks that she's a priest? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. When I, was... I see a woman in a dog collar, I just, I can't help myself. I like grin and smoke. It's like, have you actually read the Bible? Do you know who the apostles are? Like, please, please, yeah. stop making a clown yeah, out of yourself. I, I feel weird saying the word priestess. I know. Um, uh, maybe well, I didn't it's like a emphasize it enough. <laughs> Let me play. Let's play. It's, it's 30 seconds. Here, so everyone talked about the, car, the, the cardinal. Uh, before, and you no one talked the about... before you play the card. Give me your take yep. on the cardinal, because a lot of people said, oh, look, he's bashing Biden. And there's another way to read that clip. It's like he's giving him an out, and he used the phrase cafeteria Catholic like a kind of jokey thing, not as a real mm. uh, criticism. What's your take, Mike? I think that's right. What, it, I, it, I didn't. It's so funny. I didn't push. I didn't talk much about him. You're right. It's not. It's the most gentle. <laughs> If it's a rebuke, it's the most yeah. gentle, soft-handed rebuke yeah. that one could possibly give to a man who would deserve a much uh, Good. larger Good. Uh, rattling. Uh, but but let, let the people decide. I would say that he's very sincere about his faith. Okay, so there's a good start. Yeah. To your point. Yeah. Like, a guy is he? very sincere about his faith but loves Planned Parenthood. Yes, got it, Cardinal. Yes. <laughs> is, that's a, I don't know if I would even start with that premise. I would say that he's very sincere about his faith, but like a number of Catholics, he picks and chooses dimensions of the faith to highlight while ignoring or even contradicting other parts. There, there is a phrase that uh, we have used in the past, a cafeteria Catholic. You choose that which is attractive and dismiss that which is challenging. Okay, I'll stop there before we get to the, the Episcopalian gal. What do you make of that? I think it's a real soft pedal. I, I really mm -hmm. think it's a real soft pedal. I mean, let, let's be clear, this, this is a guy who, you know, he really should be excommunicated. I mean, if you're facilitating intrinsic evil, which is the theological determination of abortion. It is, there is no abortion that is justified because of the taking of an innocent life. And if you've therefore facilitated by funding Planned Parenthood, which Biden has done, then he shouldn't forget, you know, getting, you know, communion on Sunday. The guy should, should be, there should be a public statement by the Holy See that, I'm sorry, you are not a Catholic as long as you support intrinsically evil actions. He or, or she said something later that, well, there's a difference. You, you yourself can be a professing Catholic and hold different policy positions over here but, for the people you lead. Well, look, this is the old canard, right, of the, uh, I'm a Catholic, uh, but my public stance is different from my private stance. Well, no, that's, that means you're, you're a schizophrenic liar, okay? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's a, non a, a faith isn't a small gap board. It's not a menu item. Like, well, I believe the Pope on this. I don't believe the Pope on that. Or when Jesus said this, I'm not into that part, but I'm into this part. No, no, he's, he's not yeah. a Catholic. I mean, your, your, your faith is not a private, is, is not split between what you think in private and what you do in public. Then you're just a hypocrite. Yeah. Okay. So here, so that's that's one thing. Here's the thing that people I don't think have talked a lot about. So here, the the Episcopalian gal jumps in. Or as Thomas Aquinas would say, you you allow your conscience to guide you. Okay. Now, to be clear, Thomas Aquinas never said that. Nope. <laughs> but you allow your conscience to guide you. What do you, what do you make of that? Why why would she interject that? Because that's that, 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 you know that's. Kamala Harris at the Kavanaugh hearings talking to Blasey Ford and saying, I believe her truth. I believe your truth. That, that's just somebody pretending to be a religious person who is using the garb of her office to justify secular postmodernism, right? And, and, and moral, right. Relativism, moral relativism. I mean, that's just garbage. That's just somebody who's a liberal 
postmodern relativist saying, you decide. It's up to you to decide. <laughs> It's unbelievable to bring Thomas Aquinas into that as your your intellectual justification for that, when clearly he was speaking about a, a well-informed conscience yes. in line with Scripture for a Holy purposeful Spirit. end. And the Holy Spirit. It's not, your, it's, not you, it's not you deciding what's good. It's the Holy Spirit reminding you, hey, you've got a soul, and if you do the wrong thing, you're going to burn in hell forever, dude. That's right. <laughs> the gnashing of teeth. I was reading Matthew 13 this morning, and uh, there's a lot of, a lot about separation, and a lot about if you're in the wrong pile, you will spend eternity gnashing your teeth. Oof. It, um, when you die, so we, we talked the first hour about not, that. If anyone wants to go back to the podcast, to what, so we spent the last hour, Doctor Gorka. I want to get your political take on this. Logic means when you, if you say yes, I'm a Christian, we? when you die, you're not going to be measured by the Creator, the unmoved mover based upon whether or not you comported with your own value system. That's not the judgment that's going to be, oh, did Sebastian Walker live up to what Sebastian Walker said was good? That's what she's saying. It's garbage. That's so great. And by the way, you probably don't even do that. So, like, no one does, even, like, their own ridiculously low standards. We don't even mean. Uh, that's so good. All right, so we talked about abortion in the last hour. And uh, it's clear that the Democrats are making this their top issue. And we talked about how it's now in the Florida. They want to make a ballot initiative in all the swing states um, so that they can get out uh, the, their base to Florida. And, and Trump wants to get in front of this. And he said he's going to make a statement about it coming up here soon. But the big question is, do you think that abortion is a political loser for the Republicans? No, 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 as, no. I, I'm kind of fed up with this. This statement that, oh, if you're in a public event, if you're if you're running for office, I see this now with with my my, my wife's colleagues, and she's she's running for this county chair position. Say, don't, don't talk about don't talk about abortion or or what do we say about abortion? Like, no, don't no, don't mention it. It's like, are you are you crazy? We're, we're facing people. I mean, play the tape of Governor Northam, who think you can abort, quote unquote, a baby after it's born. You don't run away from that. You say, hey, look at the other side. They're into infanticide. Forget about doing it in the womb. They want to have the option to kill it after it's born. Don't run away from it. After the greatest victory that I thought I'd never seen as a Catholic, that Rosie Wade is known in my lifetime, after that victory, we run away. We are winning. I mean, look at the figures for kids. Kids are on our side. Oh, by the way, Science is on our side when it comes to when life begins. And we want to, this is, this is classic GOP, right? Ne never miss an opportunity to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. We are winning on an issue which will be the key metric for judging our civilization, meaning how we treat the most vulnerable. And the establishment wants to run away from an issue we're winning. Oh, my gosh. Mm. We we broke the conversation into three com three different ones. You have the the moral argument about abortion. You have the legal argument about abortion. Like what can the states do versus the government, whatever. And then you have the political conversation. Like what's the political stance that conservatives should take to win this moment? Um, because the calculus by many is that we should have had a red wave in 2022, but didn't because Roe v. Wade was overturned five or six months earlier. So do you believe that that's I, 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 don't, I, I don't have. There is no empirical data to that 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 effect. That's Absolutely right. not. Yeah. There's a lot of empirical data for how Mitch McConnell gave Lisa Murkowski millions of dollars because she's a freaking rhino, you know, lapdog to him, and then pulled money from actual MAGA candidates across the country. You want to talk about empirical metrics? Talk about Mitch McConnell. Talk about Rona Romney McDaniel and their culpability. No, this is this is this is a talking point of the left. You know, you lost because you protected the babies. No, go to hell. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. The 2020 was a function of the swamp of Rona, of Mitch, and of cowards. I mean, look at what we're witnessing right now. I mean, look at my. He he, he was my intern as a young Marine officer. Look at Mike Gallagher. I mean, an 
absolute disgrace and insult to the uniform he once wore, who resigns one day before the deadline so that he can't be replaced before the November election. That's who we're fighting. Those are the people who would have you believe, oh, don't mm. talk about abortion, run away, run away. We are seeing the extinction of the rhino class from Mitch to Mike, and we need to run towards the gunfire right now, not away from the gunfire. That's so good. And if we run away from it, they fill the void with whatever yes. they want to fill it with. Yeah, yeah. the establishment so fills true. the void. The establishment who gets as much money when they lose as, as when they win. I mean, that's, that's the GOP <laughs> establishment. They get the same amount of money if they lose the election than if they win the election. Mm. Uh, did you see the clip the other day of King of the Atheists, Richard Dawkins? I did not. What, what, what is that moron said now? Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, he said that I would... I don't have it in front of me here. I could pull it up maybe. He said, um, uh, I pref- I'm a cultural Christian. And I prefer to live in a, a culturally Christian nation than any other. <laughs> why, why, do you, why do you chuckle? Because every time I think of that man, I go back to Ben Stein's incredible documentary, It's Spelled. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. That was his, it was cl- definitely his worst moment, but also like the most real moment. Totally. Him. I mean, it, it encapsulates he would, he would modern, say it's his worst the, modern, moment. the, 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 the imbecility yeah. of modern atheism. <laughs> that we have Dawkins, yeah, right. who's meant to be the greatest brain of the four atheist horsemen of the apocalypse, you know, along with that cretin <laughs> Sam Harris, who actually said on camera twice, I don't care if, you know, if Hunter Biden was killing children in his basement, uh, censoring the Hunter Biden laptop story was a, quote, justified conspiracy. I mean, th- these are the people who are held up as icons of leftist intellectualism. And if, if your listeners haven't seen it, Ben Stein's movie, the documentary Expelled, which was like over a decade old, in which he chronicles yeah. back then the political correctness of what you are not allowed to say in high schools, in colleges, especially when it comes to questioning things like evolution or talking about religion. And the last scene in the movie, I don't know how he got it on camera. He just constantly pushes Dawkins on the origins of life. Okay, evolution, okay, okay. But where does the life come from? How does it start? Because science has no answer for the unmoved mover. Science has zero, zero answer, except for the cop-out, the multiverse garbage. So where does it come from? And he pushes so delicately on Dawkins that Dawkins actually says, so, so where does it come from, Professor? And he finally says, well... I probably, probably seeded um, by aliens from another planet. So <laughs> believing in God and 2,000 years worth of you know, Christian teaching, that's wacky, right? But aliens, you know, the sperm of aliens seeded the earth. That's science. I mean, that's who Dawkins is. That's when you know the greatest intellects of the left are in cretins. 